A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty I.O. Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Hurry, big fellow! I'll Silver! The Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan have been enjoying a few days' rest at the ranch home of Mustang Mag. The purpose of the visit was to present Dan with a horse, a mount that would be his very own. Needless to say, the boy was excited when he first saw the frisky white colt. And he was more than proud when he learned that his horse was the son of silver, the Lone Ranger's great white stallion. Dan had made several attempts to ride the unbroken colt, but so far he was unsuccessful. However, he kept on trying, and early morning generally found him in the corral instead of at the breakfast table. I stand still now. Pull the cinch a little tighter. Doggone it, stand still. I'm going to put this saddle on if it takes all day. Inside the kitchen of the low, rambling ranch house, Mustang Mag was busy preparing breakfast. Good morning, Mag. Well, indeed, it is a good morning. What do you say, Tonto? <laughs> Me plenty hungry. <laughs> <laughs> good, I figured you'd feel that way. Well, plant your feet under the table, boys, and I'll rustle more wheat cakes than you ever saw. <laughs> Thanks, Mag. Where's Dan, isn't he up? Oh, that young'un's been up since daybreak. He's out in the corral trying to put a saddle on his horse. Well, evidently, he believes in getting on the job early. That's a good sign. Oh, he's got plenty of sand, too. That white cayuse has pitched him off a dozen times, but he's still trying. Hey, look, he's going at it again. Come over here by the window, Tonto. Mm. Well, he finally got the saddle cinched. Now, if he can straddle it... I think he'll do it. Oh, that horse got plenty of spirit. Him not like saddle, him throw Dan. Him Victor all the time. Dan'll change that. Look, he's in the saddle. Oh, maybe him pull leather to stay on. No, he won't, Toto. Dan'll ride him right or not at all. Well, a pretty good job so far. Now, if he can... Ju Look, he's heading for the gate. Is it open? Well, sure it is. There he goes, boys, like he was shot out of a gun. Good. A long, hard run is what the horse needs. Dan can stay on a while. He may be late for breakfast. The horse will know who his master is. Mm, that's right. Then sit down, boys. The grub's ready. Oh, uh, by the way, Mag, where's Missouri? Doesn't he usually stop by about this time of the morning? Missouri? Uh, the old scalawag's come and gone. Oh, is that right? Uh, he was moseying around here about daybreak. 
got in my way, so I sent him in, sent him on an errand. Oh, isn't it a little beneath the dignity of a county sheriff to be running errands? Oh, shucks. Missouri ain't got no dignity, no gumption either. <laughs> Where did you send him? Over to Piper City. I got some household stuff over there. He's going to load it on a buckboard and bring it back. From sheriff to delivery man. And all because of a woman. Uh. What'd you say? Oh, nothing, Mag, nothing at all. In the nearby town of Piper City, Matt Norton entered the Drover's Bank. Matt was a large man with strong and deeply tanned features. Bespoke the many years he'd spent out of doors. Most of it had been in the building of the Double T Ranch, of which he was justly proud. Perhaps that was the reason his step was so firm and why the Spanish quirt he carried in his right hand snapped with such emphasis. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Norton. Is Bragg in? Yes, I'm sure Mr. Tollop is in his office. I'll just... Uh... Matt, I thought I heard somebody come in. Heard a whip cracking out here. Couldn't be anybody but you. <laughs> Always carrying that Spanish quirt, aren't you? Yeah. Packing this quirt is more of a habit than anything else. What can I do for you, Matt? Plenty. The last time I was in here, it was to ask a favor. A $10,000 mortgage on the double T. Remember? You've got the money, Matt. Sure. And I've kept up the interest, too. The only thing that riled me about that deal was that I had to take it sitting down. You stood up and dictated the terms. When a man's borrowing money, he has to take it any way it's given. Uh, maybe so. But that's never been my way of doing business. I figure everybody's equal. Hmm. You know, this is the first time I've known you felt this way, Matt. I'll remember it. I've got something else to get off my chest. If it's an extension on the mortgage, Matt, I'm afraid No, I... it's not that. It's something else. <laughs> uh, Matt, uh, if we're going to talk business, let's go into my office, hmm? What I want to tell you is this. In the meantime, Dan's early morning ride had carried him many miles from the ranch of Mustang Mag. It was over an hour later that the white horse, apparently winded from his long run and the fruitless attempts to unseat the rider, answered Dan's stern tug on the bridle and headed for home. That's it, boy. Yeah, we'll go back home now and have some breakfast. <laughs> Guess you know who's boss now. I said I'd ride you, and I did. I didn't have to pull leather to do it, either. <laughs> Good thing you've got all that bucking out of your system. I'm here on your back, and this is where I'm going to stay. Hey, what's the matter? Get up there. Get up, boy. Hey, now, wait a minute, boy. What's wrong? Oh, oh. Oh, he's scared. That's what's wrong with him. He sees something over there. He's scared of him. Hey, wait a minute. You can't. Oh, doggone it. You threw me again. All because you're scared of nothing. There's nothing over here but sand and cactus. We're out here in the middle of a desert. I'll go over and prove it. Well, oh, excuse me, mister. I didn't see you. I didn't know there was anyone around here. You see, my horse got scared and I... Hey, wait. There's something wrong here. Why would a man be sitting out here in the middle of the desert like that? What? He's dead. Golly, this is the queerest thing I've ever heard of. I'll bet even a Lone Ranger never saw anything like it. No wonder my horse is scared. I don't blame him. There's nobody around here, and yet... Wait, what's this? Oh, it's a whip. A quirt. Gee, it's a good one, too. Now, why would anybody... Uh-oh. Easy, boy. Somebody's shooting at us. Boy, this is one time I'm glad you can run. Get up there! Dan's been gone for over two hours. I wonder why he isn't back. Well, maybe he rode all the way into Piper City. Oh, no, Mag. Dan wouldn't go that far without telling me. Me here a horse now. Yes, Tonto, but it's not Dan. It's a team and a buckboard. Eh, must be Missouri. The old coot should have been back here an hour ago. Oh, he's worse than any young'un that ever lived. Come on. Oh, oh, you critter! Oh, hi, hi, 
Hey, folks. Hello, Missouri. Yeah, what took you so long? I could have walked to town faster than you drove that team. Now, man, it made no call for you to talk like that. I think I made real smart time, considering I had to load all this stuff and tie it all in the boot. Mm -hmm. Did you get everything I told you to? It's all right here. Three parlor chairs, fancy washstand, dry goods box full of dishes or something that rattles, a horsehair sofa. Where's your rocker? The what? My rocking chair, the one with the red plush trimming on arms. Didn't you bring it? Sure, I brought you a rocking chair. Got it tied in the back there. Where? Why, right... Right. Yeah. That's funny. Go on. Missouri, you spavin legged old fossil. Where's that rocker? I swear I tied it on the back of the buckboard. I can't see how it well, got... here, Missouri. I hear rope. It wear through. Maybe chair fall off, huh? Well, I'll be a gopher's uncle. Sure, that's what happened, Mag. I had your chair lashed on there real good. But somewhere between here and Piper City, the rope must have worn through and... And my best rocker, the one I caught it all over the state of Texas for the last ten years is laying on a sand heap somewhere. Oh, Mag, don't get so riled up. Well, I'll turn right around and go looking for it. I'll find... Oh, no, you won't, you lop-eared galoot. First thing you'll do is unload what you got and burn it in the house. Well, get a move on. Oh, losing something as big as a rocking chair. All the had of brain half-witted. There just ain't no way of ever pleasing that woman. <laughs> Never mind, Missouri. Todd and I will help you carry these things into the house. And then we'll go with you to look for the chair. At that very moment, in Little Shack at the edge of Piper City, two hard-faced men were congratulating themselves upon a job well done. You know, Red, I'd say we handled that thing pretty slick. Well, sure, Pete. We didn't bring back what the boss wanted. He's liable to beef about that. Uh, let him beef. Is it our fault the old gent didn't have it on him? No, but he won't. Uh, wait till I tell the boss about finding that chair and how we used it. <laughs> he couldn't have done any better himself. Yeah, maybe so, but seemed kind of crazy to me. <laughs> Trouble with you, Red, is you haven't got any imagination. Don't you see how slick that chair worked in with what the boss told us about? You're forgetting the kid that came along and found it. What about him? That one rifle shot scared him to death. I bet he's still running. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what happens, just as long as I get paid. Oh, we'll get paid all right. All we have to do is lay low till after dark, then go see the boss. Here comes Dan. Ah, him ride horse good oh, now. Hold there, boy. Hold. Oh. Congratulations, Dan. I see you're riding the horse instead of being thrown. Oh, I rode him all right, but he threw me again. He did? Where? Out on the trail. Out in the desert between here and Piper City. Hello, Dan. Saw... How are you, son? Oh, I'm fine, Missouri. I'm glad you're here because... Now, what's you're... that you have in your hand, Dan? Oh, it's a quirt. A real Spanish quirt, see? I hope you haven't been using this on the horse. Oh, no, I, I haven't been using it at all. I just found it out there in the desert. Well, I... Missouri, you're going to stand here and gab all day. You're going out and look for my rocking chair. Dad! Rat it, Mag, I'm going. Just what? Did, did you say something about a rocking chair? Oh, Missouri lost one that belongs to me. At least he says he lost it somewhere between here and town. Well, is it a rocking chair with, with some kind of red cloth on the arms? Uh, that's it. Well, I know where it is. Where? It's in a little cleared spot by the side of the trail, about five miles from here. There. Didn't I tell you, Mag? It just fell off the buckboard well, and landed it. safe. And that's why I hurried back here as quick as I could. Now, what do you mean, Dan? Did you know it belonged to Mustang Mag? Well, no, I, but I want to tell you what I'd seen. That rocking chair's out there in the middle of the desert. There's a man sitting in it. A man? And he's dead. There's a bullet hole right between his eyes. The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Dan's startling announcement about finding a dead man in Mustang Mag's lost rocking chair brought swift action. Within a short time, the five riders, following Dan's directions, reined up sharply beside a little clearing on the desert. Oh, who's oh, the horse? Oh, 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 oh. There it is. He's still there. The big fella. Let's take a closer look. Uh, uh. Well, it's my chair, all right. But sure, if you hadn't lost it, oh, I never figured on anything like this. Uh, Dan was right. He's been shot between the eyes. But how did he get here, and who is he? Well, how did he who is he, Missouri, do you know? It's Matt Norton. That's right. Matt Norton owns a double T about ten miles west of here. Well, who'd want to kill Matt? Oh, ain't you the critter who was blatting about being an arm of the law? Arms are supposed to answer questions, not ask them. Look, look, Kimasami. Pockets all pulled out. Yes, I noticed that, Tonto. Must have been a robbery. Why would anyone take the trouble to prop the body up in this chair? Oh, poor old man. Oh, stop groaning in Missouri and do something. Well, what'll I do? We'll find out who killed him. Dan, you said someone fired at you. From which direction did the shot come? Right over there on that rise. Well, that's Razorback Hill. And that Spanish quirt, where did you pick that up? On the ground. Oh, about, about ten feet from where you're standing. Uh, there are no signs of any struggle. You must have thrown the whip over there. Don't make any sense to me. Nothing makes sense to you, Missouri. First thing to do is take the body into town and turn it over to the undertaker. Dan, you help Missouri. Sure. Todd and I will go over to Razorback Hill and try to pick up a trail. Here, Silver. Come, Scout. Uh, I just remembered something. City boy. What's that, Mag? Uh, Matt Norton's <coughs> daughter, the only kin he had. She, she'll be all alone Why don't now. you ride out to the double T? Yeah, I will. How about the chair, Mag? Want me to oh, get... Oh, I'll come out and get it myself later. No telling what had happened if I depended on you. You'll see you at the ranch house about sundown. Come on, Toto. Uh, Come on, sir. Get him up, scout. It was several hours later at the rear of the drover's bank that a small door opened and closed quickly. Pete, what are you doing here? I told you never to use that door in the daytime. Oh, nobody saw me come in. Town's busy talking about the murder. So I've heard. I suppose you and Red want your money. That was the deal, boss. You put it on the line and Red and me will be drifting. Very well. Give me what you took from Norton after you killed him. That wasn't much. A few dollars and an old gun that's hardly worth packing. Say, uh, boss, that was my idea about using a rocking chair we found out there. I remembered what you said about this old gent hating to sit down. Very so... clever, Pete. Poetic justice. What's that? Never mind. Give me what you found in his pocket and I'll pay you off. Well, I tell you, we didn't find nothing. It wasn't on him. We searched good. Are you lying to me? Honest, boss, it wasn't there. It must have been. Who? Oh. Then someone else reached him. Before we did? Ah, you're talking crazy now. You've got to have it. Everything depends on it. Let's see if it wasn't in his closet. Now, Red and been... I even hung around there for a while after we put him up in that rocking chair. Nobody come along except a kid riding a white horse. He was scared to death when he saw the old man. Picked up the old gent's quirt the and he... The quirt? That's it. Why didn't I think of it before? Where is it now? Well, I just got through telling you. A kid come along and picked it up. You fool, what kid? Well, I don't know. I never saw him before. Must live around here someplace. Find him. Get that quirt at all costs. Well, I don't see I'll what... pay $500 for it. Will? Five hundred dollars plus the money you have coming now. Boss, old man Norton's quirt is as good as in your hand right now. Getting dark, Dan. We'd better be getting on out to the ranch. Nothing more we can do here in town anyway. I'll get out to the livery stable and get the horses saddled. Sure. I'll be along just as soon as I clear up a couple things here at the office. I'll wait for you at the stable. <laughs> I think they'd leave a lantern burning around the stable so you could see where hey, you're going. Kid. What? Who are you? You look like a kid who could use some ready cash. Do I? Yeah, saw you walking down the street. That uh, quirt you're carrying. How much do you want for it? Uh, I don't want to sell it. Give you five dollars. Five silver dollars. 
No. Now, listen, I want that quartz. So, you know, either you sell it or I'll oh, take it. Oh, don't. After right my wrist, you'll... Give it to me. Let go or I'll... Why, you little coyote, The only way you'll you... get this whip is like this. I'll tell you hey, to swear. Hey, what's going on? Dan, is that you? Missouri, he's trying to steal the quartz. Who is it? I'll take... Uh, there he goes. Halt! I'll stop him. Oh, he got away. Who was it, Dan? I don't know. He wanted the quartz. First he tried to buy it. Then he was going to steal it. Sneaking varmint. Too dark to trail him now. Oh, that wouldn't do much good anyway. Let's hurry and ride out to Mustang Mags. The Lone Ranger will want to hear about this. Well, this man tried to force you to give up the court. What did he look like, Dan? Well, I, I couldn't see his face very well. It was dark there by the stable. But I'll bet I could recognize him now. How's that? You told me not to use this on the horse. But you didn't say anything about not using it on a thief. I see. Let me see that quirt, then. Here. Oh, that's an ordinary Spanish quirt, plated raw hide and a wooden handle. There are thousands of them just like it. This one must have something to do with Matt Norton's murder. Did you and Tonto pick up a trail over on Razorback today? It wasn't enough to follow, Missouri. Just some hoof prints that led back to the main trail to Piper City. Uh, I went over to the Double T this afternoon and talked to Cassie, Matt Norton's daughter. Oh, poor lamb. She's all broken up about her pa dying. That's too bad. Worst part of it is she's going to lose a double T. What's that? Well, her pa had it mortgaged. $10,000. Last week he sold all his stock so he could pay it off. He must have had all that cash with him today when he was robbed and killed. Who holds the mortgage on the double T? Greg Tolliver at the Drover's Bank. Pretty soon that skin flint will own every ranch in the valley. Matt Norton might have paid off that money before he was killed. Nope. Greg was out to see Cassie today. He said her pa came into the bank this morning, but he didn't pay any money. And there wasn't any receipt in his pocket when we found him out there. I sure wish I could catch the varmints who did that killing. Maybe you can, Missouri. What? Otto. Uh -huh. I want you to ride into town. Find the home of Greg Tolliver, the banker. Uh -huh. Tell him Miss Norton is here at Mustang Mag's place, that she wants to see him at once. Very important. Uh -huh. And when you leave, you'd better double back and trail him out here. Just in case he brings someone else with him. Understand? Ah. How to go? Uh, why do you want that scallywag Tolliver to come out here? I want him to walk into this room and find Matt Norton's Spanish quirt lying on the table. Uh, what's the quirt got to do with it? I don't know, Missouri, but I intend to find out. Now, when Tolliver gets here, we'll all wait in the next room. <laughs> bring message from Miss Norton. Norton? What's the message? Well, she at Rancher Mustang Mag. She wants you come there plenty quick. It important. Why? What's so important? Mm, me not know. Me just bring message. All right. Uh, you come to Rancher Mustang Mag? Yes, I guess I'll come. Ah, uh, that good. Pete Red, you hear that? Norton. Ain't that the daughter the old gent that was in the rocking chair today? Yes. Why does she want to see me? Well, maybe the old man left a will or something like that. No, there wasn't a will, but... Well, if I don't go, it'll look suspicious. Well, what's the matter, boss? What are you scared of? Nothing. Why should I be scared? Well, it might be better for both of you to ride out there with me. You can wait outside while I'm talking to Miss Norton. Anything you say, boss. Come on, let's get going. One horse, too. Good. I'm glad Tano's trailing them. Put the quirt on the table, Dan. We wait in the next room. Sure. Uh, you, you want me to vamos, too? Oh, of course he does, you old horn toad. What good are you? Hurry, be? hurry, and be quiet. Here he comes. Deserted. Wonder what the Norton girl is doing over here. Yeah, she might. The court. Yes, it's Matt Norton's court. Now I'll see if I. That's what I thought, Tolliver. I didn't know the exact place. Mask, who are you? Someone who's as interested as you are in the riding court that belonged to Matt Norton before he was murdered. Where's Miss Norton? She sent for me. She isn't here. 
I sent that message to get you out here. You sent it? Hand me the quirt. I know now what you're looking for. This whip belongs to me now. I own the double T and everything on it. Hand over the quirt. If you take another step, I'll... Better not reach for a gun, Tolliver. Boy, you... You asked for it. Red, Pete! It won't do any good to yell. Whoever came out with you won't be able to help. Otto! Uh, Me catch two crooks. Good. Now all I want to know is who killed Matt Norton. I don't know anything about it. That man there with a cut on his face. He's the one that tried to steal the quirt from me. Keep them covered, Missouri. Sure. Oliver, aren't you anxious to get this quirt because you think it might contain proof that you murdered Norton? I, I didn't do it. Well, how can that measly quirt prove anything? Well, I noticed that Mr. Tolliver was twisting the handle. He must have guessed the same thing I did. Well, well, it's hollow. The handle's hollow. That's right, Dan. And inside is a mortgage on the Double T Ranch. It's canceled and marked paid in full. Signed, Greg Tolliver. What a glory be. Then Matt did pay it off. Of course, Mag. And on his way home, he was murdered. I didn't do it. I don't know anything about it. Well, if these other men are willing to take all the blame, it's all right with me. No, he won't. He hired us to do it. We haven't even got paid for the job. Yeah, that's... That's enough evidence for you, isn't it, Sheriff? It sure is. And I'm hurting these Jaspers right down to the lockup. Good. You go with him, Dan and Tonto. Uh-huh. Mustang Mag and I'll ride to the Double T and tell Miss Norton she's still the legal owner. Come along, Mag. <laughs> Land sakes alive, this is the happiest day of my life. All right, move along there. You quit it. Keep your hands up. Missouri? Oh, Missouri. Oh, what do you want, Mag? Tomorrow morning, I want you to pick up that rocking chair and bring it back here. <laughs> Golly, I thought she'd forgotten about that chair. Oh, not her. That woman's got a memory like an elephant. Oh, Silver! Holy! <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>